What's up, everybody? This is Gavin Castleton, keyboardist for The Deer Hunter. I'm going to walk through uh, the remix I did of a song called The Line from Act 4. Probably my favorite track off of Act 4. Uh, I did a remix for our Pillar app uh, audio library. It's in the exclusive section. You can totally go check it out. Um, and I'm going to walk you through some of the things I did in that remix. Uh, but to start, I'm going to... Um, this is the original uh, file I started with. This is all the stems directly from Casey uh, from the original track. And these are untreated, unmixed, un-EQ'd, un-reverbed, un-whatever. Um, this is all very dry stuff. I probably ran it through a little bit of reverb for my own sake and did a little bit of mixing and panning, but fundamentally it's pretty stripped down. So obviously what's awesome about this is you can hear uh, some of the incredible tracking that was done for this record raw. Um, for instance, check out these harmonies. It's the end of the line for you and I. Don't make believe we even try. Ah, oh, they're so good. <laughs> so, so cool. Here's the um, big... Uh, choral arrangements Casey did. Obviously, that's him doing all the parts um, because he's cheap. No. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Um, so, uh, and you got Mellotron flutes in here. It's awesome got some organ that comes in even some synthesizer one of the cool things about the synth too is that it it feels like such an acoustic song you kind of don't notice this is a synth at least i don't and then there's celeste we got electric guitars, really cool. Those labeled Nashville guitars here. And the other, the last thing I'll point out is that the drums are super sparse. You just got shaker, kick, and the kick is this big. And the shakers and the tambourines are shakers and tambourines. So there's not a lot of rhythm instruments to work with and that kick drum is very far from being a funky electronic kick so i kind of got my work set out for me cut out for me i'm gonna open up my remix now and we can look at what i did to it um track by track okay we're in the work file for my um remix and uh, first I should mention, as sparse as the original song is, it's got a pretty thin instrumentation for a deer hunter song. I want to see if I could go even more sparse and really let the vocal do most of the heavy lifting. So I kind of stripped it down, and I also just wanted to see if how much I could just center it music, uh, instrumentally around this bass, just a bass line. Um, and so that was kind of my main focus at first was getting the bass and getting the drums put together. And then I used, I sprinkled in elements um, from all or from a bunch of the other instruments. Something pretty important to point out is that I gave myself the challenge of not adding any new synths or any new samples or anything to the track. I made everything from the original tracks. Um, so that made some things pretty challenging getting a good kick drum making a good kick making a good snare and making a good bass that would play a new bass line were part of the challenges of doing that and a bunch of the percussion elements because as we pointed out the percussion was pretty thin to begin with so i'll start with the kick drum kick drum is created from three different samples um and i broke them out into 
uh, kind of the three elements of a kick. There's the gut, or what I call the gut, but it's like, you know, the really low meat area of a kick. There's the chest, that's kind of the, you know, the upper mid stumpy. And then there's the click or the slap or, um, you know, producers have a lot of different names for that. But basically, I broke them out in an instrument rack in Ableton to be the click, the chest, and the gut. And I automated the entrance of each. So when you're hearing the beginning here, right now we're just hearing the chest this guy and this was probably made let's see what i made this out of so that's actually made from a, a the bass guitar i took that from the bass guitar and i applied this um drum bus effect with a bunch of compression saturation to it and i eq'd certain frequencies to create that kick so there you just heard the click and the gut kick in this is the click alone and that is actually made from let's see oh i think it's a vocal <laughs> so that's casey pitch shifted down uh eight steps and it looks like i didn't end up using any of the other stuff i was going to do to that i just applied that and then the gut this guy let's see what this is. oh this looks like it was made from a kick drum pitch shifted down two steps and then eq really dr dramatically here and that's about it so the kick drum is comprised of those three things and then i automated them to enter at certain times so in the in the verses you're just hearing a chest and then you hear the top and the bottom drop in when the groove really starts happening. The snare was um, also comprised of two things that are not snares. I think one is, let's see, one is a rim shot, and the other is what I call the body of the snare. So this rim shot is actually, let's see, guitar. I took the attack of the guitar, and I put it in a sampler, and then... I did something kind of funny where I played the snare along in the key of the song. Like first I gave, I put it in pitch and I tuned it with the body too so that when the body drops later on in the song, let's see about here, you hear this much bigger meat and then, but it's actually, see it's following the pitch of the song. <laughs> and that... I think the rim shot is pretty simple. It's just got, um, it's just that chopped up guitar for the attack. But the body is created out of a kick drum, probably. Let's see. Yeah, and it's run through a pretty drastic EQ. And then also, most importantly, maybe this vocoder um, stock Ableton plug in this vocoder assign, like it applies to some. Hold on. Let me kill the. The vocoder gives it this white noise that actually sounds like snares. That. And I also applied an oral exciter to it to give it a little more snap and a vintage verb with a gate on it. And then I compressed the whole thing a little dramatically with an Arturia 76 simulator. So that's the snare. Percussion is comprised of the tambourine and shaker. I just moved them around so that the accents were on different beats. And I sequenced them a little different to emphasize the choruses more. Also, a little interesting is this kick drum delay thing I did where I took the kick drum and I ran it through this Echo Boy sound toys, which I used a couple times in this remix. This is a fun plugin that has... A lot of parameters you can tweak for delay, um, some of which are crucially the groove and the feel. So you can actually make the delay swing correctly with your swing. So I run the kick drum through this. I let the I I I do a lot of EQing to this as well. Let's see, yeah. So that it doesn't sound like a kick drum. It sounds more like um, PVC pipe or something. And those are giving because I didn't. Besides the shaker and the tambourine, I needed a little bit more to 
kind of get the full rhythm. So this is what you hear in the, the bigger section of the song. Okay, and moving on to the bass. The bass is comprised of two samples together, and then I played this new bass line. And I kind of started with the craziest bass line. <laughs> it sounds like Muppets crap, but I like it with this. It just grooves really hard. Like I can listen to the bass line for a long time and not get annoyed, and that's usually the sign of something. Kind of cool. Um, it's comprised of a kick drum and the actual electric bass. So I took one note from the electric bass performance. Let's see. You can see there's just this one note, and it's being the Ableton sampler is applying it to that MIDI that I played out. And then the kick drum is the other piece of it that's giving us the funny sound. And I guess that's a run through. That's a that's a kick drum being pitched all over the place with some drastic EQ, some filter freak stuff, a different uh, Sound Toys plugin that's kind of fun, and it's accenting those hits. Actually, I think I, yeah. So this is the pattern it's following. I have this um, filter envelope being assigned to these hits. Go, go, go. So that kind of accentuates those weird um, anticipatory 16 notes. And then I think the whole thing is there's some um, multiband compression going on just to knock down certain things. I was trying to get that line with all the funny sounds going on to be really uh, consistent. So certain notes aren't like way louder than others. So it sounds really like consistent. And that's about it. And then I compressed it at the end using a 76 simulator from Arturia that I love. Uh, 1176 simulator. Yeah. Uh, that's the bass. And then with the electric guitars, I just, um, I chopped a couple of them. I used them for various swells and things. I reversed some of them. This was already in the original. This was in the intro, but I moved it and I cut it and... And I used it to lead into sections like this. Just in for kind of swells moving into sections. And then I had these chords and I cut them and reversed them and cut them and reversed them. So that they would um, accentuate each new chord in that part. The acoustic guitars, I really barely used them. Oh, wait, I did something crazy with this. Wait. Yeah, I forgot about this. Okay. Um. So this is the finger picking virtually untouched, but what I did is a kind of a common Ableton trick now. I feel like a lot of people play with this, but there's one of the cool things about the algorithms in Ableton is that when you warp it to a new time, so when I change this all to 90 BPMs, all the tracks got warped by Ableton to be in time with that. Um, you can pick the algorithm you use, and from these, there's tones, texture, repitch, complex. And beats is one that... It really is really particular about the transients and you can tell it which transient you want it to preserve. And I have this set to eight notes. So it's right on every beat, right? But I don't remember how I did that, but um, why it's on the offbeat. Well, maybe I slid it. And then you can adjust the amount of like decay after the transient. So this is what it would actually sound like. But I chop it way down. The other thing that's happening to it that's making it sound so psychedelic is that it's running through two things. This crystallizer. This is kind of cool. It creates these reverse delays. So you can hear it kind of pogoing around. And then this filter, I assign this pattern to it. This M12 from Arturia. So that's doing these funny um, sort of envelopes on each of those accents. Then I compressed it all and EQ'd it a bit with this 1973 preamp. 
And then I used another bus compress or no, sorry, a multi-band compressor to try and knock down some of these so that it sounds a little more, a little less obtrusive. And so it's almost like a banjo going on in the background of this section. Let's listen to it. It's the end of the line for you and I. And they're accenting the upstroke, so it's like good, 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 good. They're all kind of doing that. Watch this. So in a way, it doubles or plays along with that kick delay thing I did. This. They're all accenting the upstroke so that the kick and snare, which are just slamming the ones and twos, are not doing any of the work. They're doing all the work of the of the pocket. The kick and snares are just played by like a mongoloid. Is that wrong to say? Um, that's about it for that. I made these little funny Ed Brickell wow envelope filtered guitars using the filter freak here set to like a I think it I think it is activated by the velocity or the loudness of each hit let's see Mellotrons and flutes uh, and organs rather Mellotron flutes and organs I kind of left intact I didn't do much I swelled them a little bit so they were a little less human probably a little more human. Let's see what this shows. Or maybe I should have. No, maybe I didn't do anything to those. Maybe I did that to the organs. I thought I remember doing that. Um, no, I didn't. Didn't do anything. I just used them in, in to make those things sound bigger. Jeez. Pulse synth. What is this? Oh, so I took those original synths and I applied an automated EQ to them and this filter jam. And I narrowed the stereo field so they're not really out on the wings like they were in the original. So, and I'll, I'll point this out that uh, throughout the mix, I did a lot of um, wave-like movements with the modulations and the automations and... Um, like I and the swells and stuff to me there's a lot of flow like watery kind of vibe to some of the stuff that I wanted to um accentuate here's the monosynth pulp oh forgot about these so this is interesting I took these these kind of take the place of a hi hat in the last instrumental so I took this um wave synth and uh this is arturia pigments it's just a monster synth and i took the wave synth and i applied the sound of i think it's the kick drum again or it's a guitar hit and it's running through this whole synthesizer and then playing these notes and i swung them all so they have their own melody throughout the end here And I played around with those, the settings on that, that, on that, um, on pigments so that they do this funny pitch shift every, on the eighth note of every other bar or something. Anyway, there's that kicking in in the instrumental sections. I left the Celeste mostly alone, but I did apply these super massives. They're running through this, um, return it's a Valhalla super massive it's kind of awesome for that shoegazy kind of stuff I um this is the stuff that Rob uses like a big sky for live a lot and I kind of simulated that here I also should point out that I usually lately have been doing this standard template -y thing where I set up three reverbs usually one for vocals sometimes two one for the lead but in this case I did one for the vocals which has a delay on it and then 
a verb. Let's see if I can just solo some of these vocals. Here we go. A so, bigger things. So this is running through a tape delay simulator, and then after that, about how a vintage verb. And usually I don't run delay into a reverb, but I did for this because I thought it was kind of interesting, and I didn't mind that there was delay on the whole vocal. I just thought... I'll do some throws outside of that and stuff, but that was cool. Uh, the background voice, background vocals are also run through the same verb, just kind of uh, more. They're a lot wetter than the lead. And what else? So the point was that Celeste is running through the space verb. I'll usually do a vocal verb, a band verb, or like that's for all the instrumentation. In this case, it's an Arturia plate simulator and a little bit of post EQ clean up some frequency that was bothering me and then i'll do a space verb or something that's like a very long verb for just like odds and ends like little things not usually a whole track or anything but in this case the celeste is run is running through it the whole time here and so is that synth so that's kind of how i set up my verbs a lot of time i, I don't want to get carried away putting them on individual tracks because i don't want like 30 different room sounds some artists are doing that a lot but i kind of like it cleaner because then i can control it site wide if i want these to be in time and everything i can control it um, across multiple instruments and it also limits me in a way that i like where i'm not like you know i i want to think in those ways i want to think in like vocals are their own world i want to think in a short sometimes i'll do a short room a medium room and then a space verb or something but i don't want to give myself like every length and um size and everything possible that's just it ends up being really muddy and harder to clean up later um so aside from that let's see i did some kind of interesting thing with the, with these um harmonies you remember these so originally these are all let me try to zoom in on this a little bit originally these are all um this is like this four-part harmony casey doubled each i think so there's really eight of them and if you look here see if i remember how to do this oh i do wow um that's a bit much anyway if you look there, um, they're kind of all staggered until they get to here. Th this is how they were originally. They're all lined up like this, perfectly, perfectly. But I was playing around with them, and I ended up staggering them in this way that I thought created some really interesting harmonic tensions some braiding, and when it all locks in here, when the kind of grand finale of the song happens, it's really uh, uh, soothing for to hear it line up again. So listen, how it changes. And then they're all together when these guys enter. And now we see to set us free. Anyway, I thought that was a cool little um, subtle resequencing of the, those harmonies. There's not much that one should do with them because they're perfect um so <laughs> definitely doesn't seem like way better or anything i just thought it was kind of a cute little trick um. okay and the last thing i'll point out is some of the little things i did with his vocal to use for like swells moving into sections. I took like syllables and I'd run them through these big reverbs, press them like this. Because sometimes you need a simple transition. So it's just an S from one of his things here. Let's see it. 
So I'll take, I'll, you know, I'll run his lead into a vocal track, another track. You can kind of just send it into a different track with a crazy reverb on it. Record that, print it, maybe reverse it, maybe pitch shift it. And I did that a few times around there. And I also, let's see, this is another example where I ran it through this cutter. Uh, not cutter, that's a dumb way to say it. So this, I'll run it through a delay into another channel, EQ it, compress it, beat it up a bit heavily with like a 60 dB of compression there. And then run it through this tremulator, tremulator, which is uh, another Sound Toys plugin. And again, just like their um, Echo Boy, what's so fresh about theirs is that they really give you parameters around the groove and the feel so it's real subtle but i tweak these in the accent so that when and and you can what you're hearing here is this pattern i think there's two it's kind of an a b pattern back and forth and it's chopped up like that and then it's chopped up with the feel applies, so it kind of swings with the beat, which is nice. So you can kind of hear. It's the end of the line for you and I. Don't make believe we even try. It's the end of the line. So anyway, that's kind of cutting underneath everything. Just subtle percussion. I'm not going to say it sounds like a DJ because that would be whack, but it kind of sounds like a DJ, but I think it's cool. It's the end of the line <laughs> for you and I. Don't make believe. That's kind of it. Uh, we had Mufasa come in and rap on this track. He kind of did a quick thing, but we didn't end up using it. Uh, he's just always asking for too much money. So there's like... Yeah, it's the end of the line. Got that endo in mind. When I get up to heaven, I'ma puff a John Prime. When I get down to hell, I'ma smoke with Blake Snell. Cut a deal with Steve I Shred him out like D. LaRusso. Cross too many roads, I'll be marooned five like Crusoe. Rap grapes like Steinbeck. I got the hips of a linebacker. And the buns of Ralph Fiennes check it. I come divine with the most sublime sports jacket. Grapes like Steinbeck. Uh, anyway, that didn't work out. Um, So that's about it. Uh, hit me up with any questions if you want me to dig into anything in particular or if there's anything you heard that I missed that sounded worth mentioning. Um, happy to answer anything on Pillar. You can just comment in there somewhere. Um, and thank you for supporting us on there. We really appreciate it. That app is helping us all survive this pandemic. Your support through the app means a lot to us and we love having a home for all the odds and ends and exclusive content that we make and have been making um, for so long that sometimes doesn't get to see the light of day. So check it out. The final mix of this is in our audio library section. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll do more of these in the future. Let me know what uh, worked and what didn't work for you about this too. If I if I suck at it, tell me. If it's uh, long-winded, I'd love to know. Anyway, have a good one. Thanks. It's the end of the line for